comparing, how they've been developing, and where they're going in the future. Um, to start, I'm going to be defining the terms I'm using. I'm going to be using COVID and pandemic baby interchangeably. They mean the same thing, about the same thing. Um, these are children who were born like right before the start of the pandemic or during the pandemic. So these kids are about two years max now. So it's very difficult to find information on them, but I found a really interesting study. And tablet kids are like teen uh, kids ages like three to 10 maybe, right? So these are the kids that we'll see in the corner at the restaurant on tablets and their grumpy little fingers. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna be showing a clip, just 20 seconds of it. Um, uh, what kind of, hey, does this sound system work? No. Do I have to unmute my laptop? I'm gonna unmute it just in case. Okay. But I'm going to show the first 20 seconds of this because then it gets a little inappropriate. But um, it's what inspired me. Let me tell something to you. If you don't have a pandemic baby, then you cannot sit with me. You understand what I mean? These new pandemic babies are built different, completely different. If I had had my last baby that I had during a pandemic oh. first, I would. All right. No. Let and so that got, like, when I first saw, it was a very similar TikTok. It wasn't the exact same one. But when I first came across it, I was like, oh, that's interesting. But it makes sense. To me, it made sense. Because I was like, oh. I was like, oh, well, that makes sense. There's Noah. And <laughs> it makes sense. Because these children are being forced to be at, with their parents. They're kind of constantly being monitored, etc. cetera. Um, so when I came into this, I came in with the hypothesis COVID babies are developing at higher rates because they've been required to stay home, thereby allowing more children, being the COVID babies, to be around their parents and learning from their parents and observing from their parents, which is, if you must know, one of the most important things for a young child. Um, and then here I have, when I started my research and I went to Google it, these are what showed up. This is a screenshot from my search bar. I've not Googled anything yet. I typed in pandemic baby. Pandemic babies are smarter. Babies development, more advanced. What are pandemic babies called? Are different, develop faster, walking early, meme. Um, so I was like, okay, cool. So more people are also thinking about this. And then I got into the research. We're gonna start off with tablet kids. Um, So, <laughs> to what extent, oh, did I put them in the wrong order? It doesn't matter, I know what I'm talking about. Um, so, I was thinking about tablet kids. Do not worry about that. And I was thinking about how they've been developing. Because I, I need to compare the pandemic babies to something. I can't just be like, this is a child. I saw a child once, this is one of them. I can't do that. I'm not necessarily allowed to do that. Um, and so I got to thinking, well, how children in like our recent modern times before the pandemic have been developing? And how has internet and tablet usage <laughs> affected their development? Well, I, according to, I believe it was PubMed Central, um, well, the use of tablets at an early age can have long-lasting effects. One of them being, um, it increases the potential for addictive uh, behavior. I wrote here, it's dopamine, our favorite. It's our reward chemical. Also, um, when you use an electronic, it kind of goes off in your head because you're getting stimulus. Now, us humans love stimulus. It's like our whole thing. You're stimming right now. Um, <laughs> it's a perfect example, I'm sorry. Um, watching TV stimulates your brain, drawing stimulates your brain, doing something as simple as me pacing around the room stimulates your brain. We love stimulus. Now what happens when we're watching on our laptops and tablets and all that is we're getting dopamine. Um, <laughs> now what's happening 
is, I'm not sure if there's an actual word for this effect, but we're getting used to the dopamine. It's starting, it's like, this is the only example I can think of, and I'm so sorry. It's like when you're a drinker, when you drink alcohol, and you're drinking, and then your tolerance goes up, so then you have to drink more to get that buzz again. But then that tolerance goes up, and you keep going, and now you're drinking way too much <laughs> just to get the same amount. That's what's happening with Blackhawks. That's why we um, notice as times go on, um, in 2007, the average time for a child to be on their tablet was one to two hours like, a day. It's much higher now because we need more laptop time to add up to what we used to be able to get like within 30 minutes. Um, this is why you see people, um, there is an option on your phone to see how much screen time you've had. That's why it's like seven, eight hours a day now. Because first of all, we're always looking at it from it's a necessity in our modern world. And Second of all, we need more screen time to get what we used to get from being on our phones for like 30 minutes. Um, we've also noticed that it lowers communication with people. Um, <laughs> this little kid right here is on his laptop, or laptop, I keep calling it a laptop, a tablet. This little pressy tablet that looks exactly like that one in the corner, which I thought was so funny. Um, but he's not communicating with um, his family. Um, the, there's an article that we had to read in my English class. Um, there's a girl, she goes by the name, um, she goes by the alias Amelia or something. And um, she talks about how she notices that when she eats dinner, most people are on their phones. And um, that she notices the same for her friends, for her family. And we see a good example of this behavior starting here. Um, there's also been a study done where we notice a 7% decrease in classroom participation with the um, involvement of laptops and phones. My phone has a notification on the screen that's just staying there, and I'm wondering if it has something to do with recording. Cool. <laughs> but we've noticed this because students have phones now, so they'll look at their phone while in class, or um, they're not really thinking about the class, they're thinking about something they saw earlier today, like, such a stupid thing, why would someone do something that dumb, etc. So if we're not really in class, we're still thinking about what we saw on our phones or what am I going to do after school? Probably go on my phone. Um, we've also seen sleep problems. Phones have been known to give people sleep problems. Um, the blue light thing. You know about the blue light thing? Where um, our phones radiate a blue light, so that messes with our sleep cycle and it makes it more difficult to sleep. Um, and then we've also seen obesity. Now, fun fact, as from coming from an obese person myself, um, children with obesity have a 27% increase in non-justified absences. There is an exact word for it, I can't remember, but these are absences where there's not really a reason like, technically, I could not be here right now because there is a funeral happening in my family. A great-grandmother died. I'm not attached to her, so I'm perfectly fine. <laughs> but I technically would have an excused absence if I wasn't here. However, we do see that these children are less likely to go to school. Um, now, what's recommended for children when it comes to screen time? We have here something from the Council of Communications and Media, and it's a chart showing about what time and how much and what type of media kids should be consuming. Before 18 months, there's no need for children to be consuming media. They can't comprehend outside anything outside of their 2D world, their 2D mindset. That means, um, Let's say, I'm looking at this. If I was a baby, I'd be like, oh yeah, that's a thing. But I'm also reading it, and I see Girl Scouts, and I go, oh, like Girl Scouts. The Girl Scout people will give you cookies at the store. Babies can't do that. They don't comprehend that yet. So showing any media to a child, the second that image leaves the screen, they completely forgot it. It's no longer there to them. So there's no need necessarily to display any media to kids. It's fine if it is like family members, because Again, communication, we love that. We love people being like, hey baby, what's poppin'? And the baby will be like, goo goo ga And you'd be like, oh my god, that is fine. But putting on like 
that's why I had that on there. I had a sensory baby video. There's these videos that have been going around where it's just kind of like little vegetables vibing. This is in the uh, background, it's like a vegetable doing a little dance. Those are videos that people have been showing their newborns because they're like, this gets them to be quiet, you know? And that's because they're getting the stimulus loop again. It's not great that they're getting that much stimulus back. So yeah, like I said, I'm going to get closer and they're going to need it more. Um, but yeah, no video chatting outside of screen time, preferable for anyone under 18 months. Um, when we get like 18 to 24 months, that's when you get like higher quality. That's going to be like PBS kids specifically. Um, and like, you know how like PBS, uh, Dora the Explorer is a good one where it's like, where's, <laughs> it's, it's only Spanish word, where's the banyo? Point at the banyo. And then like, the kid is interacting with it, that's good for children, that's amazing for children. Um, two to five year olds, some quality programming, co-viewed with an adult. Um, again, TV with kids, good. Um, no screens during meals. Um, no screens at least one hour before bedtime because, again, it can affect your sleep schedule. And turning off television and other devices when they're not in use. What I mean by that is um, you sit in a chair, you're vibing, you're not even watching the TV. You know who is? Little Johnny. Um, so they're getting the TV. What is that noise? Oh, what's that? I do not know. So the real question is how well have they been developing? We've seen these kids, they've been introduced to these electronics at a young age and everything, so I would like to do <laughs> a drum roll. Um, perfectly normal. These kids have been perfectly normal, and it's been very confusing to me. Um, I did research. <laughs> so this was confusing to me when I heard it. I was like, huh, okay, that's cool. You know, love that. That's amazing information. Wonderful to hear. No downsides to that. To hear that these children who I'm like, oh, they don't, they don't do anything with silly goose. They're always on their phones. Felt a lot like an old lady uh, when I would think that because I didn't corner with your laptop, your laptop, your YouTube. But then I got to thinking about it. My brother is in the tablet kids category. He is six years old. He regularly still goes outside to play with friends. And if anything, the tablets have helped him and his friends come up with some more ideas for games. Um, I'm actually the one who he'll run to, like, every other day, like, Siren, Siren, I need you to make the Among Us cards. What that means is I get to sit there for, like, five minutes writing, <laughs> crewmate, imposter, crewmate, crewmate, and, like, help them come up with tasks, and then they play real-life Among Us, which doesn't really work, but to them it does, and, you know, that's all that matters, they're kids. So, I was like, I guess that makes sense, um, because I'm still confused. And like, well, surely pandemic babies um, have different results because of the complete differences in the way they're becoming like, and raised and all that. So what exactly did I find out about pandemic babies? Um, hold on. <laughs> this is interesting. Now, we've seen delayed vocabulary. We've seen that they haven't been picking up on words as quickly and as frequently as kids have in the past. Um, we've seen increased social anxiety. There was a video I actually came across while researching this, and it's like um, my son going to the store for the first time in his 1.5 years of life. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's insane. Because they haven't really had to bring the child with them. Um, We've seen that they're born smaller and with higher levels of cholesterol, uh, cortisol, sorry, cholesterol is a different thing. Cortisol, and for information, for those who don't know, cortisol is our stress hormone. It's what's like, you're stressed, you're gonna die, you're panicking. And we've seen that these babies are born with higher levels of this, and this is because, again, a lot of these babies in this category were born during the pandemic. So we've been dealing with unemployment, we've been dealing with um, the pandemic. We've been dealing with a lot of political things showed up near the beginning of the pandemic. So there's been a lot of stress and for the mothers and when they have these babies, you know how life works. So a lot of this stuff got into the baby 
and they're born smaller because of how stressed the moms have been, and they're born with higher cortisol. So again, their stress kind of got put into their system. And we've also seen a lower IQ. I wrote 78 here. The average number for an IQ for children these ages is 100. The, we've seen a 22-point decrease in the IQ of babies. Um, for context, what we measure when we're measuring IQ for children this small. Um, are they babbling? Are they, what are their motor skills looking like? Fine versus gross, gross being like, I'm crawling. Fine being like, I'm picking up a cup and then putting it on another cup. Um, we're kind of seeing like how they react to images, etc. So we're seeing that these kids aren't doing it as much. Um, but I think the most important fact is that for context, breastfeeding can, uh, not breastfeeding your child can decrease their IQ by 5% on average, right? And so people are used to more like, oh, that's kind of a small number, it doesn't have a really big impact, but this is 22 points of a decrease. And so I was frustrated and confused when I learned all this, like, huh, <laughs> I don't like being wrong, first of all. Why? How? It's like children are being forced to hang out with their parents and learn from their parents. Why isn't this happening the way I thought it should? Well, um, I did find out what happened. We have lack of engagement with the others. What I mean by this. Um, usually when you're a working parent, you put your child in a daycare. Or you hire a babysitter. Or simply you bring them with you to places like the store. So these children haven't been with other children. They haven't, if these are only children. The only people that they've ever really seen is their parents. And as you see by the second point, that isn't really as good for them as previously thought because stress, um, again, the unemployment thing. So parents are out looking for jobs, trying to figure that all out. And also we've seen an increase in exposure to electronics and television because they're dealing with their own things and it's very difficult to also deal with a child while dealing with everything else. So their go-to has been putting their child in front of a screen. Um, your baby watches stimulus video and you'll stop crying and I can get some work done or I can find a job. Um, but again, we've seen a decrease in like people hiring babysitters, people putting their children in daycare this is another thing I connected back to my little brother was, oh, we used to put him in daycare all the time. I was put in daycare all the time. I learned how to use an air hockey table at daycare from like a fifth grader when I was like in second grade. And like all these interactions have helped like me learn how to socially interact with people. And these kids aren't getting those opportunities. They're not visualizing other children acting their age. And it's not helping them. It's having a negative impact on them. Um, here's a quote from Heidi and Feldman from the Stanford School of Medicine. Every experience, positive or negative, major or minor, impacts how we see the world and how we develop. And again, this gets tied back to how the pandemic has been affecting families, child development, and it never ceases to amaze me. And I think in conclusion, I was wrong. And the pandemic did have an effect on child development for the children born during that time. However, it wasn't what I thought it would be. I thought, again, that, oh, it's going to increase development rates. People thought that. People were like, oh, duh, it makes sense. But we were wrong. And. Here are my references. Um, any questions? So it's sort of like the pandemic kids are just a younger version of the tablet kids because when the parents are dealing with their own stuff, no. they just... Oh. That's, that's what I was uh, explaining there. Evan is a tablet kid. He sucks. He's a jerk and he's mean, but he's still, you know, socially felt. He does 
He has been to daycare. He has been around people. Another thing I didn't bring up with the social thing is people haven't been able to see their families. Like, you haven't been able to be like, hey, this is your aunt. Say hi to your aunt because there's been a pandemic and we've been for social distance. So, like, Evan, he got to interact with um, his cousin Arden, his cousin Kai. He's been able to interact with our neighbors, you know? But kids, like, these babies born with the pandemic haven't been able to do that because we've been isolated. So it's just been, like, your parents and the children in that immediate family, and that's it. That's all they know. Again, it's increased social anxiety. These kids are having meltdowns when they go out in public because they're not used to seeing this many people. People outside their family, they haven't really seen. Um, so it's been very stressful for them. And they're not just smaller versions of the tablet kids. Everyone's technically a smaller version of everyone else. We find different ways to fit into different things into our lives. And you know, people are still the same. Um, no matter how much you want to be like, oh, this generation's better than that generation, or we're in a different time. Like, yes, we're in different times. We all have different views on things than people did 100 years ago. But we're all the same, and regardless of all that, we all still start somewhere. We're all developing, and it's just something. So in a way, yes, they are just mini tablet kids, but no, again, their IQ is 22 lower. They haven't been able to socially develop. And it's just been a lot of differences. Um, any other questions? So what do, what do um, as making predictions, mm -hmm. what will elementary look like for these kids? Actually, it's a very exciting topic. So um, something that is noted that I didn't put in here is there is a chance that these children do recover because they are still very young. Mm -hmm. um, it's the first either 1,000 or 3,000 days, 1,000. First 1,000 days is seen as the window to a child. And that day is a lot of developing happens. The child needs to be around people, it needs to learn. Um, this is when they gain kind of like a moral sensibility. This is when they gain empathy, sympathy. They learn about the world. Um, so what, we, uh, what we're predicting, not me, but people in general, are predicting is that they can recover. There's a chance for them to recover. Maybe not to a full extent, but to an extent regardless, because if we start, um, it's not much you can do because it's a pandemic, but if like, there is a chance to help these children, I think um, if we don't fix the problem, we're going to see a lot of children in elementary school instead of um, something that we've seen consistent is the developing of like friend groups throughout the years, um, such as the normalization of school and education. Um, these kids aren't going to be developing friend groups as well because they're going to be isolated into themselves. So it's not going to be like, um, like, I'm crazy. Oh my god, I'm also crazy. Whoa, that's so cool. We should hang out. Like that's, it's not going to happen. It's just going to be a bunch of kids to themselves. Some may group up, but it's going to be a lot different than we've seen. And these kids are going to be a lot shyer. It's going to be difficult. Um, but again, I do think we can Any other questions? I mean, it's, it's fascinating to see what kind of development that they go through mm -hmm. when everyone dies and what we look at for development. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it makes perfect sense after you, know, you talk about not having multiple social, social react, react, yeah. react. Right. Right. Oh, that doesn't make sense. Oh, wait, yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah, when it's not the right time. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not the recording. It's a different one. 